Hey, how's the weather? If you don't know about my channel, I'm here trying to make my own creature collector based off of science topics, and I had this one design that I really liked, but it was made before I decided to go fully independent. Now, I still want to use this design, but it's based off of the weather mechanic. Weather as in the condition that affects the combat's environment, that can shape how the battle plays out. So today I'll be talking about how Pokemon handles the weather mechanic in their battles, and then briefly go over how other games in the genre do something different with it, before finally talking about my own design and some related lessons. Alright, let's get started. In Pokemon since the second generation, there are a set of status moves that can determine the weather of the battlefield for a few turns. In their third generation, they extended it so that some abilities and overworld events can also trigger it, while also basing their legendary's personalities off of this mechanic. And they made various changes here and there ever since, but what do these weathers do? Let's start with the basics. Alright, so Rain boosts Water type moves by 50%, and Weakens Fire type moves by 50%. Harsh Sunlight is the polar opposite, as it boosts Fire type moves by 50%, and Weakens Water type moves by 50%. Simple enough. It's a fun mechanic that deals with the lopsided interaction between Water and Fire. What's important is that only one weather effect can be active at a time, so certain strategies can be shut down by changing the weather on them, Speaking of strategies, despite these weathers only affecting fire and water type moves, this makes a ripple effect towards the mons that are weak to these types. Additionally, there are some specific abilities that can get triggered in the weather. And lastly, there are specific moves that benefit when a certain weather is in play. I know I haven't talked about all the competitive weathers yet, but this is what makes this mechanic so intriguing. You can have flavored teams that are based on a specific weather, that are really strong, but they're balanced by how the opponent can shut it down by setting their own weather. In Generation 5, more mods were given abilities that triggered these weather effects, which were indefinite when triggered by the ability, requiring everyone to set their own weather to shut the other down. Now since then, weather effects always last for a few turns, so you could always wait it out, and instead they gave the legendary Kyogre and Groudon special forms that can shut down every other weather and also prevent them from setting up. But their weather also disappears as soon as they're off the field. Their respective heavy rain and extremely harsh sunlight could only be replaced by the other legendaries of the weather trio. And here instead of dampening fire moves and drying out water moves by 50%, they completely squash them out so those types do zero damage. I'll talk more about this trio later. Hmm, do I have to mention that Legends Arceus removed the buffing portion of Rain and Sunlight, where it just reduces the other type's power? I don't know, it's probably for balancing that game's specific combat mechanic, because the type buffs are back in Scarlet and Violet. So the other pair of weathers is Sandstorm and Hail. They can both hurt everyone for 1 16th of their max HP at the end of each turn, except for certain types and abilities and whoever holds safety goggles. But as a whole, hail doesn't hurt ice types and sandstorm doesn't hurt rock, ground, and steel types. Now that's admittedly harder to remember, but on top of that since generation 4, only rock types get a 50% boost of their special defense in sandstorm. It's a few more things to remember than the sun and rain interactions. Now I heard that Sandstorm was a menace back in Generation 5's Weather War days. Not due to the chip damage, but rather the abilities that it activates on some already strong mods. From Sand Rush that doubles one speed, to Sand Veil that raises Evasion, which makes more moves miss against them. Now Evasion and Accuracy as a whole is kind of frustrating to deal with. It's unreliable for the person using it, and the person who missed feels like it was unearned. As a brief aside, this is something I'm kind of weary of for my own game at its current state, so I don't really want additional evasion or accuracy stats. I plan on having a tech demo for the combat by the end of this year for internal playtesting before moving on. This game is gonna take forever to make. Ah. On a different note, Hail is also popular for allowing a strong status move to take place, Aurora Veil, which halves all incoming damage for a few turns. 
The veil requires hail before going up, so certain mons like Obama Snow had a use, despite having oh so many weaknesses. But the latest Scarlet and Violet games don't have hail anymore. No, we got snow. So a lot of Pokemon fans murmur about how weak Ice is defensively. It's supposed to be strong against certain strong types, but it just makes people run Ice-type moves on non-Ice-type Mons. With the latest games, the developers tried to address this by replacing Hail with Snow, which no longer hurts everyone but boosts the Ice-types instead. In Legends Arceus, Ice-types were 33% faster, with some status conditions changing behavior. I didn't even know about this until I looked this up. But in Scarlet and Violet, the snow just simply boosts Ice-type's defense by 50%. Now, if Sandstorm can boost Rock-type's special defense and still deal damage to everyone else, why must the Ice Weathers only do either or? Well, Aurora Veil can still go up in snow, and all the hail setting abilities were replaced with snow. And for now, these are the four main weathers that are in use. In Generation 4 in Legends Arceus, there was a fog, which can't be activated by any mon. It's just purely dependent on the overworld's condition. The fog reduces everyone's accuracy, and while it could be fun in a casual play, I can see why there's not a fog setting move. At least there was defog, which removed that weather. Let's see... We could talk about the legendary trio again. Rayquaza usually has an ability called Airlock, where as long as that mod is in play, the weather's effect is negated. This is exactly like the ability Cloud 9, which is given only to the strongest mons to shut down the elements. Such beasts like Psyduck. Okay, but Rayquaza Mega Evolves and sets up strong winds. As long as Mega Rayquaza is on the field and doesn't get replaced by Primal Kyogre or Groudon, flying type mons only take neutral damage from the attacks they are weak to. Oh, and to clarify, this only benefits the flying portion. So if there's a water flying type, it will still be weak to electric because of the water, but it only does two times the damage instead of four times. This weather only benefits flying types, which is certainly different, but has less of a ripple effect to benefit others. But, I mean, you already have Mega Rayquaza on the field. Who else do you need anyways? Lastly, Shadowy Aura is considered a weather. This hurts everyone who isn't a Shadow Pokemon, and it's a unique mechanic in Pokemon Gale of Darkness. But this brings up an exciting topic, auras and terrains. Now, auras as abilities are limited to the Generation 6 legendaries, but the idea was to have an additional effect for everyone on the battlefield, not caring what the weather is doing. See, while weathers are all in the same plane of existence, only allowing for one weather to be up at a time, more complex interactions can be added on through other parameters that can coexist with the weather. I won't be going through all of their effects today, but I really appreciate the terrain mechanic, which is basically weather but for the ground. You know, Scarlet and Violet's legendaries emphasize this by having Koridon set the sun and Miraidon get an electric terrain which powers up their respective Paradox Mons, and both effects can exist at the same time, calling for even more strategies based off of the weather, or terrain. I don't have a design that utilizes terrain, unlike the other weather-based design that I'll be showing later today, but for now, let's focus on the weather and see how other games dealt with this mechanic. I think it's important to know that weather isn't all about battles, especially in a game with the world and story. They can impact story beats, being in the overworld, or impact other mechanics like what kind of mon spawn. But today I'm focusing on the combat aspect, especially because of the design I have in mind. And I found two games that utilize weather in a similar way. Koromon is a monster tamer from 2022 with gorgeous pixel animations. So they appear to have 6 weather conditions, starting with Rain, which boosts water moves by 50% and dampens fire by 50%, but additionally prevents burn status. Makes sense, but then they have Heat Wave, which makes fire types use fewer stamina points per move and makes everyone else spend more stamina points, 
which is a very unique twist because their game uses a pool of stamina points. Also, you can't freeze during a heat wave. Now, they also have snow and sandstorm, but they do different things. Snow increases freeze chances and also boosts the ice type speed by 50%. Sandstorm boosts the sand type's accuracy and crit chance. Then they have a new condition called Twilight, which lowers everyone's accuracy but ghost types and blind Koromon. And the last weather seems story based, so I won't go into it. So it seems that a lot of these weathers also affect status conditions, which is certainly an interesting aspect to consider. Now, I am well out of my depths with this one. I've never played Roblox, but I have heard of Lumion Legacy, which is a monster tamer that is on Roblox. Their Heavy Rain also boosts water moves and dampens fire moves, but is only by 25%, and also heals plant Lumions for 1 16th of their HP, which is certainly a big change, bringing them into the mix. Turns out they recently added Smoldering Heat, which does the inverse, but hurts Ice Lumions instead of healing plant ones. The Weather Strong Gust increases the speed of Air-type Lumions, and makes trapping abilities fail. This sounds more niche, but I don't know too much about their meta. And lastly, Dense Fog nullifies abilities, except for Spirit Types, where moves that require two turns can immediately fire. There are a few more I see on the wiki, but they seem to be event-based and related to spotting certain mons instead of impacting the battle arena. By now, I've seen not just what Pokemon does, but how other games tackle this mechanic as well. And they often pair water and fire as opposites. Hmm... So what would I do? Honestly, even though I mentioned having some Sandstorm-related abilities in the past, I don't intend on including Sandstorm. The abilities I write in my videos are only using Pokemon's terms to approximate effects to get a feel of what the mod is like because when I do make my game in the distant future, I'll need to have different names and or effects behind those abilities. So yeah, I'm thinking of only having sunny, rainy, and snowy weather conditions, and they all deal with my Pyro, Hydro, and Cryo types. Sunny boosts Pyro moves and reduces Cryo moves. Rainy boosts Hydro speed while reducing Pyro moves, and Snowy boosts Cryo speed and reduces Hydro speed. None of this is set in stone, and I'm gonna need to playtest it with my type chart one day, but that's not the main thing I wanted to share with you all. No, the reason why I have these three weathers is because of Phazorm, a Dumbo octopus that will demonstrate different states of matter. They're a pure hydro type in their liquid form, but get hit by a cryo move or when the weather starts to snow, they freeze solid becoming a hydro cryo type. You can melt them back into a liquid form with the pyro move or when the weather turns sunny, but do the same to the liquid form, then you'll vaporize it into a hydro aero type gas form. And this gaseous form can condense back down to a liquid when it starts to rain, or snow, or when they're hit with a cryo move. I also wanted to add some edge cases where if an opponent has pressure, which would also have a different effect, the gas form would condense into the liquid form, but the liquid wouldn't turn solid. Because unlike most materials where, in this diagram here, applying pressure to a liquid could make you a solid, for water, it doesn't happen that way. In fact, ice could become liquid when pressure is applied in some cases, because solid water makes a crystal shape, and that crystal shape is less dense than liquid water. That's why ice naturally floats in water. Anyways, if you look down here in the phase diagram where the pressure is low, solids can jump to a gaseous form and vice versa without ever becoming a liquid. This is called sublimation and deposition, respectively. And I thought this could be a fun status move. Sublimation would turn a solid phase form into the gas form, but also turn every cryo type on the field into an arrow type. Deposition would turn gas phase form into a solid, but also turn every arrow type on the field into a cryo type. All right, so we got a solid, liquid, and a gas. All of which you should be able to find roaming around in the wild, just in different areas there is still one more fundamental state of matter to go over.
Plasma is achieved by ionization, which is giving a bunch of energy to the molecules. But if you ionize a material, it gains or loses electrons. The easiest transition to make a plasma is from a gas, but, but strong lasers can manage to do so from liquids, and there's research about jumping from a solid. Now currently, my evolution method is just applying something like a thunderstone to Phasorm. Again, not sure if I'll keep that requirement or change it up, but here's the aero electrotype plasorm, where their head kind of shrunk due to losing some electrons. Now, I know there are Bose-Einstein condensates and other states of matter, but by then, you're not even working with the same substance, but rather specific subatomic particles that have their own properties. If anything, I was considering on having some kind of super cold mythical-like design that references Bose-Einstein condensates, but for this line, I'll just have the four fundamental states of matter. By buffing or debuffing certain types, activating abilities, and helping specific moves, weathers can change the tide of a battle. I'm not completely sure on how I'll handle weathers, but my current plans include the sunny, rainy, and snowy conditions. I know it's exciting to try to make a weather for each type, but it might become hard to keep up with, and besides, there are other ways like terrains and special abilities to apply additional effects. We'll see. I mean, I tell myself that even if I don't make a game, I've made quite a set of designs that I'm really proud of. But for now, I'm still gonna try my best with this game as a goal for this project because I would love to see my work realized in the specific game idea that I have. So thank you so much for watching, and thank you to my Patreon supporters. They have access to some work in progress screenshots, and the highest tier also sees my monthly progress mumblings about the game I'm working on. But if you like this video, you can subscribe and like it for free. There's a whole playlist on my own personal creature collector right here. If you didn't like how I didn't mention cast form today, I have a rant about them in the first video of that playlist. Either way, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.